tonight's spectacular show, The High and Mighty Wall, The Firepower of Danger Zone and Suspension Bridge, Crunch Time on Powerball and Nail-Biting Action on Pendulum, all here on Gladiators. Now, welcome your presenters, Jeremy Guscott and Arika Johnson. applicants this year you can be sure that the ultimate 32 are amongst the fittest in the country and tonight ladies and gentlemen you're gonna meet four of those very special people well if any of tonight's contenders make it all the way to the final they're gonna pick up some wonderful prizes this year's winners will each receive 1,000 pounds plus they both drive off in one of these fantastic new to the country four-wheel drive trucks the runners up, well, they won't go home empty-handed either. They will also receive £1,000, plus we will jet them off to the Atlantis Resort on Paradise Island in the Bahamas. So let's meet those very special people. Tonight they are Kate Rudd and Trudy Ballantyne. Breaking training racehorses at home, and I'm an amateur jockey. And I live in a little village called Moneygall in County Offaly. I guess that's what the green's all about. Now, you're an amateur jockey. Um, I would have thought you'd need to be quite small. Did you have to put on weight to get on gladiators? No, as an amateur jockey, uh, generally amateur jockeys are quite heavy, and I'm actually quite light for an amateur jockey, so the weight is fine. Okay, now you spent a few days training now, one thing and another. How are you feeling about it? Well, nervous. <laughs> no, um, I'm just looking forward to it. Um, I've been waiting for the last couple of months for this, and I can't believe it's actually happening now. Well, it really is. It is going to happen tonight, and let's hope that you have the luck of the Irish. Let's hear it for Kate Rudd! <laughs> Trudy, uh, first off, uh, you've got to tell me a bit about your supporters, I think. The way they're dressed. There's a bit of fancy dress going on now, I think. Well, I'm an anaesthetist, and half of them are from various hospitals, so theatre hat is the order of the day. Um, and that's Wharfdale Rugby Club. OK, we, uh, we know what you do for a living now. You're an anaesthetist. Uh, whereabouts are you from? Um, I'm from Edinburgh. Actually, that's a lie. I'm actually from Buckinghamshire. Yeah. <laughs> you've got people from all over the country, haven't you? Yeah, everywhere. So what do you do, what the hobbies like in your spare time? Um, I like to mountain bike, play squash, rugby, anything really. A bit of rugby, I better watch out then. Yeah. <laughs> Let's give it up for Trudy Ballantyne. And Gary Johnson. Another warm welcome, Mark. Tell us who you've got out there. Well, not all of them. It would take me all night. I've got all my family, my wife, Carol, my two little ones, Emily and Elliot, my mum and dad, my sister, my brother, and all his family. And listen, everybody, listen. Mark's wife's out there, and tonight's a very special night because it's their wedding anniversary. Yeah, 11 years, 11, 11 happy years. And I'd just like to say thanks very much, Carol, for putting up with me for 11 years. You're some woman. Ah, oh, that's wonderful. Now, you're, of course, associated, really, by default with Gladiators because your brother was on the show last year. Yeah, that's true. Last year, Andrew got through to the uh, Gladiators. There was 20-odd thousand applications. He did fantastic. Yeah. He's lovely. Now listen, tell us what you do and where exactly it is you're from. I'm uh, a street lighting electrician. I work for Doncaster Metropolitan Borough Council. Who's the boomer here? Now tell us a little briefly about the gun dog training that you do. Yeah, my hobby involves the breeding and training of English Springer Spaniel gun dogs. I've also been a regular member of the England International Gun Dog Team for the last five years. And uh, not because I'm just a member, but we have won also in the last five years I've been there. Well, that's fantastic. Yeah. So you going to win tonight? I'm going to win tonight. I'm not here for second place. That's it, that's it, that's it. Mark Whitehouse! 
Gary, tell us uh, where you're from and what you do. I'm from Hertfordshire. I'm a personal trainer, sports therapist, and masseur. Being a, a masseur there, that's great. Great from your supporters. So you're a masseur, you've got some magical hands, have you? I've got hot healing hands. Um, I've got Roman Egyptian in my family, and um, as all my supporters will tell you, I've got magical hands. Magical hands. Let's give it up for Gary Johnson. Well, we've met our contenders, so let the games begin. <laughs> Climb. It's Kate! And she's going to be chased by Siren! Also standing at the foot of the wall, it's Trudy! She's going to be pursued by Rebel! Kate focusing her mind on the wall. It's now that a week of intensive training will come into its own. How much has she learned? Tuition by mountaineering experts, plus rigorous training on a replica wall gives Kate Rudd some insight as to what's expected of her on the 40-foot sheer rock face that now looms before her in the National Indoor wow. Arena. 60 seconds of clambering and climbing. First to the top scores 10, second 5. The gladiator's job to pluck them from the rock and deny the contenders the points. Trudy and yellow, Kate in the pink, and here comes double trouble. Siren after Kate, Rebel chasing Trudy. Kate's brother Ben already giving it plenty. Trudy's mum, Pooh, the name's real, just hope the hair's not. Kate on the final escarpment, up and away, but Rebel's closed Trudy down. Rebel going for the gusset as Kate tops the precipice and opens her account with 10. Rebel's a strapping girl who's trying to get a grip on the strapping Trudy, the hospital anaesthetist trying not to go under. Rebel with the ankle. Can't shift her. Rebel making heavy weather of this. All but 10 seconds to go. Can Trudy hold on for five points? I think... Oh, unlucky! Great effort. Denied at the last. Hey, I think uh, all Siren saw was the soles of your shoes. That was brilliant. That, that went to plan. The wall was something you were looking forward to. Yeah, I've been practicing the wall a lot at home. It's a different story doing it against speed. I think it's just the luck of the night. I, I, I well, got them right. Well, a different story, the luck of the night. It still makes up to Kate. You scored 10 points! Well, Siren, I guess she was just that little bit faster. I don't think you ever got really close to her. I think she was a lot faster, actually. Um, I've been getting some tutorial help from Vogue and Lightning, but on this occasion, they're not going to be very happy with me because I've not done my job. Aww. Now, huge congratulations to you, Rebel, because I didn't think you were going to get anywhere near her because Trudy is... She was really, really fast up there. I know that. I just said to myself, anything you grab hold of, just make sure you hold onto it as tight as possible. I've never wanted something so much. I grabbed hold of her sock and I thought if I had to climb up her leg, I'm going to climb all the way up until I get her actually off the wall. And I bet you were just waiting for the whistle to be blown, so at least you could have picked up five points. Would have been nice, yeah. I messed up on the lower part of the wall, though, so she caught me. Let's hear it for Rebel, Siren, and well done, Trudy. Oh, yes! I won't take me if you can. One down, four to go. 10 nil to Kate. So now we go into the men's event with Mark. He's going to be chased by Cobra. Also waiting to climb, it's Gary. It's going to be pursued by Ace. Well, the coin was tossed backstage under the eye of timekeeper Andrew Norgate. Your choice. Who would you fancy, Mark? Um, on the wall, um, I'll have uh, Cobra. Well, what's here? You're brave. <laughs> <laughs> on the wall. Why do you want to go against Cobra? <laughs> because he is slow. he's getting on a bit now. <laughs> and all right, he's not getting on that much. He's getting on a bit. And that fake Dan doesn't do him no good at all, does he? <laughs> so there's a chance he might slip off with fake I'll Dan. I've got ten in LA. <laughs> I think, yeah, the Lewisham area. <laughs> As you saw, Cobra still showing the effect of that nasty accident in the closed season when he was painting the ceiling and fell off his ladder head first into a bucket of whitewash. The guys are up and at it. Mark in red and Gary in blue. Here come the glads. Cobra on Mark, ace after Gary. 
Brooks misses Carroll with vocal support. Mark a clear leader in this double quick climb. He's first to the summit, up and over, as the White House family celebrate. Ace trying to keep Gary out of the action. Oh, fancy footwork from Gary means that Ace has to pull the Scots out to lock on. And Ace mugging to the crowd, but will Gary make a mug of the Gladiator? Superb feat of strength from Gary. Still 20 seconds away from five points. And Ace hanging around with nothing much else to do except admire the view and the dogged determination of Gary Johnson. A masseur by trade getting to grips with a knotty problem here. The time going down, but he sure as heck ain't. Looks like Ace can't pull this one out of the hole. Oh, Ace is gone! Strips the shoe from Gary, but not Gary from the wall. Five fantastic points for Gary. Mark, I don't think uh, I would have had a chance with you. All I want to know is, did he get off his mat? I told him before we started, you'll not get off your mark, I'll be over that top before you get going. He kept telling me not to sleep. How did you sleep, mate? Where were you? Well, he was nowhere to be seen, you didn't slip. And Mark, you scored ten points! No! A loosely laced trainer <laughs> no. or was it put on properly it was put on properly I'm a Sunday climber so my members are slow and uh, I panicked a little bit I saw him catch me up I thought there's no way I'm gonna let go with all my fans over there well I tell you what at one stage you what you were holding aces entire weight by just your ankle he's only nine and a half stone so it's quite easy <laughs> yeah plus another ten let's hear for ace Gary and Cobra Remarkable performances by both contenders. Rewarded with 10 points for Mark, 5 for Gary. First up to run the danger zone, it's Kate. And she's going to be facing Lightning. Contender! the barrage of balls from lightning and return fire to hit the target above her head. That's the mission for Kate in the danger zone. Crossbow. Great bolt from the blue for Kate, just off target. Each station self-destructs after 10 seconds. Bazooka's next to hand. Oh, again, rims the target and the explosive action continues with the race to the station three and the rocket launcher. A point for every station reached. Three so far, can't give lightning a rocket. Next comes the mortar. Oh, she's hit. Ankle shot from lightning, let's confirm it. Kate breaks for the fourth station. Two steps into her run, she's picked off by a lightning strike. And next up to face lightning, it's Trudy. Trudy trails 13 points to nil, needs a hit on Lightning's target to redress the balance a bit. Invading the Lightning bombardment with skill, it's the crossbow, aims, bullseye! 10 points, cue fireworks. It's Trudy scrumptious as the Valentine celebrates. And oh, I'm just so happy, that's brilliant. <laughs> Ten points, that's it for Trudy, well done! <laughs> and let's also hear it from Gladiator Lightning! Praise indeed from the great one herself, and those scores put a happier face on the situation for Trudy, 13 points to 10. First up in the danger zone in the men's event, it's Mark! And he's going to be facing... Diesel! And believe me, if he's peckish, he will. Debut outing for Diesel, our new gladiator. And how's this for pulling power? 197 tall and 105 kilos. Compare those details with March, and we'll see that Diesel's 22 centimetres taller and 26 kilos lighter. About four stone in old money.
The quote's wrong, and the John Wayne impression's even worse, but I think we get the gist of what Diesel means. Mark to the crossbow. He's under fire. Launches the bolt. No cigar. Station blows, bazooka next, but Mark's hit! Disbelief from Carol and Emily. Diesel shunts Mark out of the game. What a great debut. Just like Lightning, Diesel aims low and clips the trailing ankle. Next up against Diesel, it's Gary! Over to John Anderson. Contender! Well, no air of mystery regarding Diesel's intentions there, then. Here's a novelty, a Diesel trying to stop someone getting from station to station. Gary scrambles across the danger zone to the crossbow. Gary fiddling with his bolt. Previously a military man, but not a lot of call for crossbow skills in the forces these days. On the station two, Diesel continuing with the offensive. Bazooka off target, but two points in the bag as Gary moves to the rocket launcher. This will test his eyesight and his trigger finger. He aims, he fires, it's a bullseye! Eat that, Diesel! Ten points for Gary, and thumbs up from the sporting Diesel. His friends celebrate. But where's Ulrika? Go, Gary! That was fair! That's my game this game. Are you had a little bit of trouble with the first station? Yeah, I was going too fast. Picked the bow up. It dropped off, so I just threw it. Well, excellent news for you. Ten points! And Gary Johnson's fans celebrate. Diesel opens his account with style. Two events gone, Gary takes the lead. Mark has 11 points, Gary 15. Well, what a fiery start to the show, but we'll be back after the break with more action here on Gladiators. Welcome back to the home of Gladiators, where we're just about ready to start our next event. Scoring with the blue balls, it's Trudy. And scoring with the red balls, it's Kate. And they're facing our gladiators, Falcon and Bo. Well, I must say, this new two against two ruling on Powerball has really turned this event into a high scoring sensation. Here's Kate Rudd from Burr, stands a metre 65 tall, weighs in at 60 kilos. On the other side of the pitch, Trudy Ballantyne is three centimetres taller and seven kilos heavier. That's about 15 pounds. Contenders, ready! Contenders, ready! Three, two, one! Kate against Vogue, and Kate wins it, slips the ball home before the tackle. Falcon can't contain Trudy, she drops in with an opening two-pointer. Kate grabs a pink ball, Vogue struggles, rims the basket, unlucky there. Trudy has the pace, and she has the points, two more! Vogue just getting to grips with Kate, takes her out there, Falcon swooping on a Trudy and spins her to the ground. Kate again, Vogue in for the tackle, oh, rims it again! The Gladiator's barely on top of these two at the moment. Fast footwork from Trudy. Oh, changes her mind, still only two points. Trudy reloads. Falcon discarded like a used hanky, and Trudy nets a big three! Remarkable scoring from Trudy Ballantyne. 15 seconds to go, this is a massacre. Running rings round Falcon, who makes it look so easy. 11 point total, scoring at will. Just time for more. Trudy free again, looks to middle it. 14 points in the pokey, and Kate's last ditch effort goes for nothing. Time out. Hello, Lily Savage is in. Kate, you're uh, out of breath. I suppose that's a measure of how difficult Powerball is, and uh, Vogue wasn't giving you any space at all there. No, I didn't think it was going to be this hard. It's uh, taking you by surprise, then, how hard it is. I'm not happy with that one now. <laughs> you're not happy with another one? Oh, dear. We might come back to you. Trudy, I think this game was built for you, being a rugby player. Oh, yeah, excellent. This is why I've come to Gladiators. What a game. I mean, at times... Falcon, that was holding on to you, and you, I mean, it's like you're just busting through tackles like you would on a normal Saturday well, afternoon. Indeed, that's right, yeah. I think you got me once, but, you know. Fantastic. Let's bring in John Anderson to find out the scores. 
Well, Kate scored two points, and I'm very glad that Trudy wasn't tackling me because she got 14 points. Woo! Let's hear it for Kate and Trudy. Trudy's mum, Pooh, on the right, sister Polly on the left, in the sensible hair. Well, Marvin, I'm not quite sure how you defend 14 points, but to say she was one tough cookie. She was a tough cookie. Um, I can see where her rugby training comes in. She's very, very good dodging. Um, just caught me out each time. And so solid. I mean, I saw you trying to bring her down, but there was just no way. You know, I tried to go low as well, but she just managed to charge through. Fantastic. She certainly did, and some fabulous tackles by you. I mean, Kate kept getting close to the pods, but not actually getting the ball in there. Um, I was quite fortunate. I got to her every single time, and I had to make sure she went down, because I didn't really want her to score against me. I think I had the slightly easier option of the two there, so I think Falcon did very well with her, her try there, but um, I got the easy one, I think. Well, let's hear it for Vogue and Falcon. Well done. Sorted. After three events, Kate goes to 15, Trudy up to 24. Now it's the turn of the boys. Scoring with the blue balls, it's Gary. And scoring with the red balls, it's Mark. And they're up against our gladiators, Vulcan and Wolf. Like they're on their way to the ugly bug ball, the diabolical duo. This is going to be no vicarage tea party, guys. The demon from down under. First they send us Rolf Harris and now Vulcan. Wolf will be tackling Gary. Meantime, Mark is grateful for a week of serious preparation. I found the contender training extremely thorough, very professional, and I've really enjoyed it. And I'd just like to take my hat off to everybody that's been involved with the contender training because it's given us a great insight towards all the events that are coming forward. Contenders ready! People of a nervous disposition look away now. Ready! A minute of muscle-bound mayhem gets underway. Wolf! Tackling Gary high, rolling him low. Vulcan puts pain to Mark's first scoring run. And Gary's lost his helmet. Wolf with the diving tackle as John Anderson stops play for safety reasons. And Gary somehow separated from his headgear. Lucky he wasn't separated from his head. Wolf the target of abuse from the Johnson fans, and I mean Gary, not Ulrika. Andrew Norgate retrieving the helmet. Wolf's strong arm tactics eases off the headgear like he's uncorking a bottle. There are 49 seconds remaining. John Three, Anderson two, sharply one. gets it underway again. Wolf and Gary on the far side. Wolf cutting up the rough under John Anderson's nose. Wolf. Gary again. Nil nil the score. Good burst of speed again. Wolf high. The ball bubbles on the rim. Vulcan forcing Mark to the deck, giving him a bigger battering than a Friday night haddock. Mark mixing it. Ref blows up. That whistle's going to be worn out after this. Gary making sure his nose is still there. John Anderson beckons the offending Mark. This game is about putting the balls in the pods. It is not about tackling the gladiators. It is not about grabbing their feet. And it is not about obstructing the game. You concentrate on scoring. Otherwise, you won't be in the game. Brother Andrew not impressed with John Anderson's rebuking, but he did call it right. Mark clearly snapping at Vulcan's heel. There are 30 seconds remaining. Three, two, one. Contenders out of the traps like whippets. Gary smashes it home. Mark with Vulcan in his way. Two points apiece. Explosive restart from the contenders. Back into the fray. Cut down by Vulcan and Wolf. Wolf checks his nose. Mind you, there's plenty to check. As Gary loads up again for another skirmish. Comes left. Wolf's there. Again, high tackling from the hound. And Vulcan running Mark wide. Ref flown up. That's got to be about the tackling. Wolf. Vulcan. Come here. Wolf. Oh, he doesn't look best pleased to me. These tackles, don't tell me they're good tackles. They are high tackles. Don't do it again or you're off. Keep the tackles low. 
Well, Mark, glad of the breather. So's Vulcan by the look of it. Twelve seconds. Three, two, one. Here they come again, and they both go for the same basket, but only Gary scores. Incredible action on the Powerball pitch. Time for more. And Mark leaves them all standing. Oh, three points middle basket right on the hooter. And there's Arthurs between Wolf and Gary. His dad, Ralph, seen it. Mark getting Vulcan a final friendly nudge. But his last run was astonishing. Cuts a swathe through everything, turns in for the three points and claims them with ease. Mark, uh, I detect a little bit of uh, atmosphere. <laughs> the man speaks for himself. He's big, mean, he's good at his game. It's a contact sport, you've got to accept a knock here, a knock there. I got back up, I got on with the job, concentrated. I got told off once, but I got it back together. I'm happy. Uh, Gary, another tough competition there with Wolf. Uh, yes, mate, he was tackling it very, very high. I find it very difficult uh, to get around him. So trying to go a little bit through him. But I think uh, it was foul to me all the way through. Well, you never gave up, and uh, it'd be quite interesting to find out what scores uh, you both got. So let's bring in John Anderson. That was the toughest game so far. For me, never mind them. <laughs> Four points to Gary, five to Mark. Let's give it up for Gary and Mark. Mark's wife, Carol, leads the applause. After three roughhouse events, Mark has 16, Gary 19. First up on the pendulum, it's Kate. And she's gonna be facing Contender ready! Ready to ready! Set the pendulum! Three, two, one! This revamped 60 second drama in the round has had a change of rules. The first is that Kate must move on the whistle and can only score if she makes contact with one of the lit six sided sections and makes it flash, just like that, for two points. But Fox quickly circles the globe. She's a serious flag snatcher, set on taking the prize and stealing the glory. Kate rides the bucking Broncos, but they don't buck like this beast. Slow start from Kate, punished by a Fox. A single two-point flash of inspiration before the fox nabs her. Next up on Pendulum, it's Trudy! She's going to be facing Lightning! Lightning looks like this, and measures up like that. Two, one! To recap, it's two points for every lit hexagon Trudy can touch and make flash. Plus, there's a four-point bonus as you can make the lights flicker on the very bottom sector. Truly taking her mum's advice and going down. Brother Dick with the long brown hair and the big green hand. Two points flashing already. Truly heading down to the basement for the four bargain points that lurk down there. And Lightning's on her trail. That yellow flag flapping in the wind. Truly's got to keep it out of harm's way. Almost on for four points now. Oh, and the flashing lights show that Trudy scored her four. Lightning's all but there. Oh, and Trudy's gone. Six points on the pendulum for Trudy Ballantyne. Well, in the end, Trudy first lost her footing, then her hand grip, and there she was, gone. After that pendulum, Kate adds two to her score. Trudy adds six. to the men's event with Mark. And he's going to be facing Rhino. Over to John Anderson. Contender ready! Ready to ready! Check the pendulum! Rhino is built for power rather than speed, 172 high and 108 kilos heavy, that's 17 stone. Go for the lights and make them flash in this 60 second global dash. Mark fires up two points for that sector. Any light accidentally flashed by Rhino, by the way, is worth two to Mark as well. So he's clocked up four already. 
Rhino not at ease on the pendulum. Mark moving for the next set of lights. Oh, two more to Mark as he sets his sights low. Careful work from him. While Rhino is making a real pig's ear of it, he heads out quicker than anyone. Ten points to Mark, straight into the net. Let's relive his embarrassment. There, that's relived it nicely. Oh, Rhino. Um, how do we deal with this delicate subject of the fact that this fest possibly wasn't one of your favourite events? That's my first time up there. I went round and I saw him, he looked so close. So I started to go round. The momentum got me, my hand slipped, no excuses, and I fell off. Certainly what happened, and, uh, ten points! Yes! I have to say that was absolutely terrific. You played Pendulum, I mean, absolutely perfectly. You have every right to feel so proud of yourself. Yeah, I'm very proud. I thought to myself, if I go left and I see him coming, I've just got to stick to it and keep away from him. I thought I might just have a bit of speed on him, me being a bulky fella. And I just kept going and concentrated, and it all pulled off. It certainly did. Let's hear it for Mark and Rhino. <laughs> Next up on Pendulum, it's Gary. He's going to be facing Cobra. Cobra, light-headed but heavily built. 183 tall and 92 kilos in weight, which means Gary's at a 5 centimetre and 8 kilo disadvantage. That's 18 pounds. Three, two, one. The chase for the points is on. Gary moving right. Oh, and flashes up two points almost immediately. Directions from his supporters moving smoothly, looking to fire up another couple of points from a lift sector. Well, there's no sign of Cobbs anywhere. Where are you? Oh, there he is. Still finding his way round. Hasn't got wind of Gary yet. Gary moving down to the South Pole. The Cobra hovering there in wait. He's had a slow start this season, so we'll want to make amends. Gary looking to get a foot in the four-point camp and make those lights flash. Oh, and there they go. Total of eight points on this excursion so far for Gary. And Cobra still doesn't know if it's Ash Wednesday or Cock Foster's up there. Gary climbing. Oh, Gary's gone! Another victim of the Fisher's swinging machine. Let's see it again. Gary on his way up for more points, but before he knew it, he wasn't. After four events, Mark closes the gap. He has 26, Gary 27. Time now for our next event. Our first female contender is Kate. And she's up against Rio. Famed for her famous bridge work. Those dazzling teeth are all hers. 22 centimetres taller than Kate and 19 kilos heavier. That's three stone. So Kate will do well to pull anything from this crossing. Ten if Kate reaches Rio's platform. Rio, one, two, look at my shoes. Kate down and out. Rio, a big hit with this crowd, especially Trudy's people. Get down, y'all. Kate needed to be one of her racehorses to get past Rio. She's delivered more smash hits than All Saints. Our second female contender is Trudy. And she's facing Rebel. If Trudy could be anywhere right now, it wouldn't be standing facing Rebel on the bridge. I'm a bit worried about doing suspension bridge because um, I don't like really being hit and hit round the head, but uh, when I get up there, I seem to stand there rather than getting out of the way, so um, it'll be fun. I'll have to just pluck up courage and go for it. And courage is what it's all about on Gladiators. The girls come out to play. Trudy, an anaesthetist looking to avoid getting KO'd herself right here. Digging in against Rebel, matching her blow for blow. Rebel, cop in a serious baseball. Good work from Trudy. Rebel replies, but Trudy can take it. A real turn up for the bookless performance from Trudy. She'll collect five points as she hangs on for the draw. Oh, but she's got her. Rebel dispensed with. Ten points to Trudy. Cool as you like, strolls to the platform to claim her victory. Fantastic result for Trudy. Well, here's something you don't see every day. Rebel in real trouble. Overbalances, and Trudy helps her to exit stage right. At the end of the day, 
It's all about going out there. Strongest will survive, weak will fall to the wayside. Being a gladiator, one of the best things ever, because you know what you can do? You can get revenge. The best thing ever. Trudy. Well, she got me on the wall, so I had to get her back, I'm afraid. But uh, did, the, did the support of your fans help you through this last oh, one? Oh, they've been brilliant. They're ed egging me on. It's just been brilliant. They've been excellent. I think it is brilliant, because, Trudy, you've got ten points. Let's hear it for Rebel. Trudy opens up a gaping lead going into the Eliminator. Kate, 17. Trudy, 40. <laughs> Two points for each crossing, braving the barrage of demolition balls swung by the gladiators. Knocked up the first two to mark, return journey for two more. The balls are raining in like the meteors in Armageddon. Armageddon out of here, says Mark, as he flies to the crash mat. Good work from the glads. Mark's wife, Carol, and daughter, Emily, pleased with four points. Check this out. Mark dodges Hunter and Saracen, but the double whammy from Wolf and Vulcan forces him wide of the platform and onto the deck. Here's how Gary sums himself up. My best quality is my dedication. Um, it goes with everything I do. I put 300% into it and hopefully get 300% out of it. My worst quality by a long way is my timekeeping. Um, even though I'm ex-military, since I left the army, my timekeeping has been atrocious and uh, probably always will be. Well, we're relieved he turned up on time for this event. Gary knows that Mark currently leads him by three points. Takes a face full of Saracen's leather, two points. For someone with bad timekeeping, there's nothing wrong with his timing here. Two more. This is where Mark came unstuck. Gary judging his runs to perfection, escapes the rough of Balkan and Wolf. Six scored. Gary's got the measure of this so far. Oh, takes one from behind and one in the chops. A head banger from Hunter, and that's it for Gary. He's furious, but he's kept his head and his lead. He takes a nudge on the blind side and falls straight into a frontal bone crusher from the Huntsman. Well, with all five events completed, Marcus scored 30 points, Gary 33. Well, our contenders will be relieved to know that they no longer face our gladiators, but what they do face, of course, is the Eliminator. It's just around the corner. Join us after the break here on Gladiators. <laughs> indoor arena here in Birmingham where it's eliminator time now in the women's event Kate's on 17 points Trudy's on 40 points that's a 23 point difference giving Trudy an 11 and a half second head start over to Jeremy Trudy you've had a magnificent show so far how much better can it get well we'll see won't we you worried about the eliminator at all well I'm just gonna keep going and get to the end first yeah, we'll have to wait and see about that. Kate, 11 and a half seconds. That's a lot of time to make up. It's not over yet. Well, you've heard it from Kate. Over to the start. I wish you both the best of luck, and I shall see you at the end. Over to John Anderson. Trudy, you will go on my first whistle. Kate, you will go on my second whistle. Three. Two, one. Trudy Ballantyne, originally from Bucks, now resident in Edinburgh, sets off to capitalise on her 11.5 seconds head start. She's got six brothers and sisters, so there's plenty of family support here tonight. The anaesthetist bounces onto the net as Kate Rudd, horse trainer and amateur jockey from Burr, begins her challenge. Up and over for Trudy. Kate kangaroos onto the first net, already eating into that lead. Trudy turns for the rope. A powerful athlete pulls up in one. Kate on the downside of the net could do with a quick, clean climb to the platform. Strong ladder work from Trudy, swaying side to side, but staying on track. Kate finishes her climb as Trudy concludes her overhead ladder. Brother Toby with vocal support as Trudy swings the valley of death. Next, 
the 50-foot mind-numbing cargo climb. Only the strong survive on gladiators. And Kate's closed the gap for just a few seconds. Fine work from her, and the Irish contingent know it. Kate gaining with every step. This is going down to the wire. Toby's on his feet now, Trudy on the gantry. Kate's almost at her shoulder. It's the zip trip to the arena floor. Trudy's first away. Kate only just behind. Flying dismount from Trudy. The seesaws lie in wait along with the agonizing travelator. Kate a few steps behind. Balance and courage before the final explosive burst. Trudy bangs down first. Fending off the attack from Kate now. Second seesaw. Now it's all about nerve and muscle. Trudy attacks the conveyor belt from hell. And she wins! Trudy Ballantyne. Kate in reverse. Tragedy and triumph. Here she comes. Go on. Yes, she's there. Kate Rudd, great contender, burst through to the finish. Trudy, Kate really did give you a run for your money there. Yeah, she was catching me, particularly on the cargo net. I just had to push it a bit harder. Was there a little bit of a panic going over the balance beams? Um, I had a bit of a wobble on the first one, but uh, still managed to get the white bit, so it was all right. Well, I think uh, you're going to have to thank the work colleagues of yours. They've been great this evening. Yeah, they've been great. Excellent. Brilliant sport. And you've got to be chuffed with a time of 1 minute 40. Oh, wow, yeah, that's great. Tremendous. I think you've been excellent all evening. You've shown uh, everybody how to do it, and you've been a great contender. Let's give it up for Trudy! to say I don't think anybody thought that with an 11 and a half second deficit that you would have caught her up as closely as you did. I know, I can't believe it. I knew that was going to be my game, but uh, I was just unlucky at the end. You did a terrific job and perhaps maybe you felt that you were so close and by the time you get to, got to the top of the travelator. Oh, I don't know. I think on the night, the best girl won and congratulations to Trudy. It's brilliant for her. Well, that's really kind. It's been great to have you on the show, and it's been great to have that sea of green on the show as well. Yeah, thank you very much for all the supporters. They came all the way over from Ireland yesterday. They're brilliant. Well, I think they've had a good time. You've had a good time? Let's hear it for Kate Rudd! There's Pooh, and that really is her name, so don't phone in. What? There's Trudy's reward, a glamorous, bright ginger wig. And that's her brother Dick. Kate with a resigned smile in the end. 11 and a half seconds, too much to overcome. And Kate enjoying a deserved family reunion. Mum, Prue and Dad Dave. Meantime, Trudy's time of 1 minute 40 was just outside the current record for the fastest women's eliminator. Now, on to the men's. Gary has a three-point lead, which is worth a second and a half at the start. Mark, as you know, it's all down to the eliminator, and it's been fairly close between the two of you all night. The games have suited both of us. We've both scored points throughout the whole contest. We've both got a lot of respect for each other, but it's all down to this eliminator. We're not here for second place, we're here for first place, both of us, and I wish him all the best, and I'm going to give it my best. All right, well, one and a half second, there's not a lot in it. I mean, we're hoping for a real close head-to-head -head eliminator. Is that what you're going to give us? Yeah, definitely. Um, it's basically an equal start, and um, as Mark said, it's been equal all the way through, and I expect him breathing down my neck all the way through, but hopefully I want to get there first and um, receive a big kiss from you at the end. Oh, all right, then. Well, wish you the very best of luck, both to Gary and to Mark. Over to John Anderson. Excellent sportsmanship from both guys. Gary, you will go on my first whistle. Mark, you will go on my second whistle. Three, two, one. Gary's away, followed by Mark. Gary cleaner over highs and lows. He'll be bouncing for the nets. The lead opening, net line for Gary. Joined by Mark via the trampette. His wife, Carol, can barely stand the pressure. Gary clumsy on the net, tangled on the downside. Gary's mate Tony doesn't like what he sees. Neck and neck at the rope climb. Mark has the edge at the top. On the bite, it's all but level pegging again, and the pedaling begins. Tony's still almost speechless with tension. 
the bike taking its toll on Gary. Mark will be first to trapeze to the net. And good, clean swinging for Mark. Gary now knows what it's like to see the back of your opponent. Net climb, Gary exhausted at the foot of the net, but he won't give in. Mark's daughter Emily rooting for Dad as he heads up the net for the sprint to the wire. Gary having another nightmare net. Mark drags himself to the highest point in the arena. Gary, the sports therapist from Chesant, needs to dig in. Tony knows it's slipping away. Mark on the zip. Solid landing. Brother Andrew and his wife Julie know that victory is in the air. Mark quick and assured on the seesaw. Good, confident work. Gary knees up for the splashdown. Mark now for the big finish. Burst of energy and the trouble is tamed. Go on, my son. Great result for electrician Mark Whitehouse. Jubilation from the family. Gary, a brave finish. The nets were his downfall. Gears up for the final element. A superb athlete, Gary Johnson. A great runner-up. to Gary, he did his best throughout the events, but I'm there, I'm not to be beaten. You did it in 1.23 and I have to say, even your brother's delighted he can get to this stage. Yeah, it makes a change, he's not shouting at the moment, is he up there, is he? He will be, he'll be shouting at you later. We look forward to seeing you in the quarterfinals, let's hear it for Mark Whitehouse. Well done. Gary, uh, I'm pretty much lost for words, I, I don't know how you must be feeling, tell us. I just did everything wrong. Panicked a little bit, got my foot stuck. First cargo net, hand bike, I dropped down a little bit. Cargo now, just having a nightmare again. And I saw Mark going through. Um, Was it a bit soul destroying seeing Mark just cruise past you? It seemed. I thought I'd fly through this my event, and uh, I'm, I'm a bit lost for words. Even though it didn't work out, have you enjoyed your evening? It's been fantastic. I'll, I'll say I'm so sorry for my fans, and uh, thanks for coming to support me. I wish Mark all the best in the world. I hope you'll get through and win it. Well, I think uh, everybody in the arena, just like your, your supporters, have enjoyed having you here. You've been a great contender. Thanks very much. Let's hear it for Gary Johnson. Flowers and consolation for Gary. Here's Mark, and there's one for the White House family album. Dad and daughter together. Commiserations for Gary from a great bunch of friends and magnificent supporters. As we bid goodbye to Gary, there's just time to tell you that in the men's eliminator contest, the current record time of 1 minute 18.3 remains intact. Back down to Willie and Jeremy for their final words of wisdom. Two fantastic eliminators. Yes, absolutely. We'll look forward to seeing Trudy and Mark in the quarterfinals. But until then, if you want to see more action, join us here next week on Gladiators. Good night. Good night. For safety reasons, do not attempt to recreate any of the events you have seen on Gladiators. Ulrika and Jeremy are just going to have a quick wash and brush up, and they'll be right back with some more Gladiators on the way in just a few minutes here on Challenge. Well, over on pick, they're watching the borders with the customs officials in Nothing to Declare UK.